Hey guys, my name is Christy and this is My Crafty Country. In today's video, I'm going to be remaking one of these trucks and one of these house shadow boxes and we're going to do it fall style. So the first thing I did was get some of the buffalo plaid cricket vinyl from Dollar Tree and just covered the truck with it. Um, as you'll see here, I rolled it from the top down to help decrease the amount of bubbles. So once I got it all the way on there, I was able to just use my fingers to kind of run it around the fender wells of the truck to get it to crease. That way I could use my razor knife and go around it and cut because I'm not going to be putting it around the fenders or the tires of the truck, only around the cab. So once I got it cleared away from the fenders and the wheels, I was able to go around the rest of the outside edge and use my sanding block to clear off the excess vinyl. So I've really been getting into the fall DIYs. So if that is your speed, like it is mine, make sure you give me a thumbs up below and subscribe if you haven't already done so and share this video on any of your social media pages or just share with a friend. I would have to say fall is just about my favorite season and that's why I get so into doing the DIYs and then I'm getting more into the Christmas ones but that is only because of you guys so if you guys are like crazy about fall like I am let me know in the comments below but one thing about fall I am not totally into is pumpkin spice and that's why in my last video I was wearing a shirt that says I hate sp pumpkin spice there I said it so other than that like the hoodies and the fi campfires and all that good jazz like I'm in so now back to working on this truck I got all the extra vinyl sanded off the edges and then where the windows were and the door the slit in the door and the door handle I made a cut with my exacto knife or my razor knife and for the windows I used a fingernail file and filed it like I would with sandpaper but this is like just sandpaper you can get a little bit in to the smaller spaces with. But then when it came to the door handle and the slit for the door, I was just able to push the vinyl down into the crack because it's so narrow. There wasn't any way of getting in there and sanding it off, but it did lay down on the edges and I don't have to worry about it popping up because nothing's gonna be hitting it. So now it's time to paint and I did the fender wells. I did those with uh, Waverly's antiquing wax and I did one coat of it and then I wiped it off and I decided that it wasn't dark enough so I went back in and just added another coat and let it sit for a minute let it soak in and then I was able to go in and start painting the tires and obviously I did them black but I used uh, Waverly chalk paint in the color ink you will see it later on in the video where I was able to go in and kind of touch up the tires where just right around the edges to where I couldn't quite get the brush to go. I just took a Sharpie in and just touched it up and you cannot even tell the difference.
Now for the rims, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant, and I just took my sweet time to where I didn't run the brush over the edge. And I think I did in one tiny spot, but when I went back in with the Sharpie, covered it right up. Now, while my paint is drying, I went in and kind of got this little uh, dry erase board house prepped up and I used the Waverly antiquing wax again and just stained the wooden frame. And I wasn't too careful about it because the dry erase board was gonna be covered up. So if I got it on the board, I wasn't too terribly worried. But just like before with the truck, I put it on and then I wiped it off. Only this time I did know that I was gonna want it darker. So I left it on there a little bit longer than I did the first time with the truck. Now I'm going to cover the dry erase board part with another piece of the Cricut vinyl and I just ballparked the size of it and then I was able to stick it to the dry erase board and tuck it in around the edges. So then I came back with a Cricut scraper and pushed it into the corners. That way it would be pretty spot on when I used the razor knife. I was just able to glide it up the in the crack there of it and it cut it away just perfect. And then I went back with the Cricut scraper and it, just in case there was any pieces sticking up a little bit, I just kind of pushed them back down. And I didn't see any, but I would rather be safe than sorry. And this also helps get bubbles out. And Dollar Tree does carry these scrapers. Come in so handy and all the time in the craft room. So here I am covering up some of my little gaps with the black Sharpie. Then I also use the Sharpie to color in the front bumper and the back bumper. Time for some embellishments. And I had these sunflower stickers from last year. And I know they probably have these again this year. And then they also have like a full sheet of sunflower stickers. If this one wasn't quite the way you want it. They also have the paper sunflowers. So next I will glue the bed rail back on and then I'll just get embellishing the back with some leaves and pumpkins. Now these orange pumpkins, I think they were from Dollar Tree from last year, but I just had them in my stash. So I'm not 100%, but they have some this size just about every year. So I took the leaves and glued them down first. That way the pumpkins had something to hook to and then I took out a knife and I just cut the pumpkins in half. That way the back would be flat, obviously. And before I did that, I did pull the stems out because I didn't know where they were gonna be when I cut them in half. So they go right back in when I'm finished, just a dot of hot glue and they stuck, stick right back in. So I cut both of them in half and I only end up using three pieces. Um, so one of the pumpkins is laid kind of sideways so I didn't have to have the stem but I just glued these to the leaves and then they were kind of wobbly so I put a dot of hot glue to the bottom of two of the pumpkins to hook it to the bed rail to keep it a little bit more stable. Now for the front of the house I did use um, one of the galvanized metal words from the three pack and spray painted it white and then E6000 and hot glued it to the front. Now where you see the Sharpie there, I just marked where I wanted to put the glue so I was spot on on where the connection points were. So here's what they turned out as and I love them. I hope you guys did too. If you are not a subscriber yet, I hope you really consider doing so and make sure you give me a thumbs up below and don't be afraid to share this video. Thanks for watching guys.